So, good afternoon. I'm going to present here how is the life on OpenStack outside the kernel. First, I would like to introduce who we are. I'm Henrique, he's Raildo. We're both from the Federal University of Campina Grande in Brazil, where we work for, with OpenStack for two and a half years, and we're both, at this moment, software engineers. So, I just like to highlight what you expect to see on this talk. First, we tell a story about the first OpenStack upstream contributors in South America. That's our team. And then we try to show how you can avoid our mistakes at the beginning and speed up your contribution and adoption at the community. And then we finalize by showing how you can be a better community member, how you can contribute to OpenStack in a better way. So just to emphasize here, you won't see at this talk nothing related to coding, uh, coding tools, and we do not tend to show you either how to become a core member because that one's too easy. You just need to be to do the best code reviews, the best patches. So that's pretty easy for you can get a core re reviewer. And then we'd like to define what we consider not a kernel. So as you can see here from this data, from the last survey, we have about 46% of delays are not working in South America. And you can see 24% in Europe and other 24 in Asia. And we consider the not kernel exactly the complement of it, which is this part here. And we also consider India as not kernel due, so, due to some uh, economical factors, as you may know. So just emphasizing here, here that's we, uh, where we are located. We live in Campina Grande. That's the Federal University of Campina Grande came from. So uh, the northeast of Brazil. And then I would just like to tell the story about the LSD, which he, oh, sorry, this is not the LSD I wanted. And uh, LSD stands for Laboratório Sistema Distribuídos in Portuguese, which is Distributed Systems Lab in English. So a brief story here about the LSD is in 1996, some professors started to uh, research uh, distributed systems. They got a small room with some computers and then back in 2000, we had a bigger room with more professors, more engineers, and more computers. So we have evolved that. And then in 2004, we have built our own building, where now we host about 60 members that include professors, developers, researchers, students. And we s research a lot about uh, distributed systems as a whole. And just uh, telling how OpenStack how we began to work with OpenStack here. Uh, it all started back in 2013, where we had a strong front on cloud computing. So we started, we decided to have a new R&D project to work with OpenStack. And at this moment, we have more than 10 OpenStack active contributors that work daily, uh, most of them full-time, a, a bit of them part-time. And we have in our lab more than 30 members that use OpenStack daily, being for development, for sysadmin team and, the, and the, the dev team. The, and finally, there's also a CI users of OpenStack here. And uh, this journey of ours, we have began with having simple issues creating a dev stack from now a point where we have three OpenStack production clouds that serve all a uh, uh, big amount of labs at our university. And at uh, this year, we have even been invited to run at the Super User Award, as you may have seen on the keynotes this morning. So this all started in the Ice House release cycle, where Hayudo is going to explain right now how was the beginning of our journey. So, <clears throat> thank you, Henrique. So our project started at the middle of the Ice House release. And anyone of, on the team have never have worked with OpenStack before. So we tried to understand what is OpenStack. And to understand that, we try to understand the main principles and the main components on OpenStack, and we use a dev stack for it. So we use dev stack to get the basic users on Horizon and on the CLI clients <coughs> and on the API. And after that, we noticed that dev stack is not enough when you need a more complex deploy. So we deployed an Avana cloud in our lab. And then another thing that we notice on the beginning is how to interact with the community and how to be leanest, how to be list, leanest, uh, sorry, listening. So when we start the contributions, 
you have a lot of questions and doubts, and you are waiting for the answers for these questions. So you need to, to understand, um, you need to use the main OpenStack terms uh, related on OpenStack. For example, if you, if you are going to the Keystone community to ask something, you need to use the project, um, the user group, the OpenStack terms related to these servers. If you are going to Nova, you need to learn the OpenStack, the Nova terms for the, the things inside Nova. These will make easier to get the answers that you are waiting for. And we had our, a couple of problems on this first release. First of all, um, we had late merged patches doing some errors, like uh, we didn't follow the coding styles on Python. Um, we uh, we sent patches with bad commit messages. So these things make our patches had late merged patches. Um, and another thing was we tried to understand. We noticed that the big picture on OpenStack is really big. So it's difficult when we are start the contribution, open stack, understand about Nova, Keystone, Neutron, Glass. It's a lot of things. And in our case, we saw that we have a lack of Portuguese documentations about OpenStack. And we saw that the, you can have the same error, the same problem in every uh, country that are outside the kernel. If you are on India or on China, it's probably you have this problem. And in our case, we had no reputation on the community. We are just starting. And the few contributions that we send, um, it's really difficult to get these parts merged and get something inside the OpenStack community. So what we learned? We learned that you need to ask almost everything on the community. So you have the IRC channels. You have the menu list. You, ha you have the ask.openstack. So probably someone have, have had the same issue that we are having now. And you can find this answer, or you can find someone on the community that will help you. But you need to be proactive. You need to go through the community and ask for the guys. There's a lot of people there that will help you. And if you are uh, more dev style, a good contribution start point is fixing low hanging fruit bugs. It's a kind of bug that every project have a, a list of it. That is simple, pro simple bugs that we will fix in one or two hours. And we will learn the Garrett workflow process um, to make this contribution, the real contribution inside OpenStack. And another thing is the summit. This is the main event related to OpenStack. So we think that we learn more about the summit. A distance member from our team was present on the Hong Kong summit in the Ice House uh, release. And we tried to make a conference with him to get more information, to understand more about the summit. But we just tried. Because we couldn't understand and we didn't solve how big this is event. So we need to go ourselves to the summit. And on the junior release, it was our first release when we become on the summit. Me and another engineer here, uh, we come to Atlanta. And we realized how large is OpenStack. We saw that. And another thing is that it's really important to make network. The social network is really useful in OpenStack. Um, you need to enjoy this event to find the guys who you know that are related to features that you are interested in, or the guy who are more experienced with something. Um, so in our case, we was interested on multi-tenancy. And we used this network to, to got a, a use case to implement that was hierarchical multi-tenancy on Keystone. So we come back to Brazil, and we could explain better to our team what was the new trending talks on OpenStack, and we got this new feature to implement. So when we come back to Brazil, the first challenge that we had was discuss this case feature on the team meetings. Some members from our team like me, didn't have uh, the English fluency. So we have a lot of problems related to the questions and, and get the answers that we are waiting. Um, we had a lot of misunderstanding during this meeting process. Um, so this is a problem when you are outside the kernel. And we was writing a complex spec. So our first job was a complex spec, which make more difficult um, to make this. And we did it have influence to get this feature approved. 
So at this moment, we improved our, our code and our style, but we keep sending a lot of invalid patch sets, which makes uh, uh, we create a delay on our planning. And this feature that we was implement, we was hit by feature freeze since we lost a couple of mid-cycle discussions. So now this feature was, uh, we couldn't merge this feature on Juno and it was postponed to Kilo. So what we learned on Juno release? We learned that you need to prepare our discussions before these team years. When you have some to discuss, um, right in advance, at least the few first sentences that you will start the discussions, um, make internal discussions with your team to talk about the alternatives, or if this meeting for this way, what will you do? Or if the discussion for this other way, what will you do? And ask for reviews to the core team. Um, but you need more than that, you need to identify in the core team which guys are interested in your feature. And after that, you can ask for reviews for these guys. And probably he will review your patch, your spec. But another thing is, we learned that it's really important to have the patch up to date on Garrett. So when some core member review your patch, be quickly and answer the comments um, and send a new patch set. Make the, the patch be up to date on Garrett. And now we saw finally that we only have we only ask for feature freeze exception is there isn't much left to do. We ask it with a lot of things to do, um, and this is a problem since feature freeze exception, is, it will just be a few days to finish your feature. And you have to see if someone on the community, some core, are interested on this feature. If someone will have reviewed this feature on the feature freeze uh, process. And finally, on the killer release, uh, we noticed that we were more experienced guys. Now we have passed the ramp up process on OpenStack, and we got the feeling that we can contribute more with OpenStack. So uh, we start to work on the Nova service in another feature, and the first problem that we got was the time zone shift. Uh, we was had meeting with people in America, Europe, on India. And it's almost impossible to get the perfect time zone for everyone. So some guys, probably the guys who are outside the kernel, will got uh, these meetings late at night. On this case, the guys on India got meetings like 3 a.m. And every week, uh, he was getting these meetings. Um, in other way, on Keystone, we merged our first large feature that was hierarchical mutancy. And we got the feeling that now we have the community trust and we receive a lot of compliments and we had the feeling that, hey, we are rocking. Everything that we send now will be merged. Uh, we are the best guys on the community. As you can see here, our feature was the f number one on key new features on the killer release for Keystone. So we had this feeling. And the next steps for Harakumu Tennis who was implemented reselling. Reseller was an uh, extension of this first feature that we made. And this feature was approved and targeted to Kilo. And we implemented it on Kilo, too. But it was not merged. And the main problem that we saw was that we didn't make a good discussion on the spec process. The feature was really big and was immature. When we start, when we are doing the implementation, it was finding a lot of bugs, and we saw that we didn't discuss these bugs on the spec process. So it's a problem. You need to be aware that the, the spec process, the documentation, the design, it's really important on OpenStack. It's an open source code, when there are a lot of people that are discussing this feature. So you need to be aware with that. Um, so what we learned? We learned that the time zone shifts we can do something like the Nova team are doing that alternate weekly meetings. For example, the Nova team made the, some meetings in a week at 2 p.m. And in the, another week, they made the meetings at 9 p.m. So everyone on the servers can be aware on what, what you are doing, what is happening with this, their servers. And you need to be more practical. Um, we noticed that it's really important to appear in the community. 
Yeah, so you need to be seen by uh, the community members. When you are outside the kernel, this is more difficult to, to make. So we decided that we, we need uh, focus on results. You need to commit more. We need to make more code review. You need to participate more of the, the OpenStack discussions. Um, so this is really important. You need to be practical. And about reseller, we noticed that you need to plan, you need to think, discuss, and design more. You need to design better. You need to be precise on what you are saying. Um, this, this part is really important of the process. There are a lot of guys on the community that just want to get the spec approved as soon as possible and go develop the feature because the company wants this at this release. And this is not the OpenStack works. OpenStack, you need to be precise. You need to design better. And now Henrique will talk about the parent summit. So as Hayo said, in Kilo release, we have discussed more details about our pending features. We have merged our first feature. And we have also been in this Paris Summit, which is what I'd like to talk about now. In Paris, we had four members of our team, uh, twice as much as we had in Juno, the Juno Summit. And what I'd like to highlight here is that this was our first summit using the travel support program of OpenStack. The travel support program is a program that helps you to come to the summit. So every, every release uh, about two or three months before, they submit a form that you apply, apply there, and then the travel committee will evaluate if you are one of the best candidates to make it to the summit. So the travel support program has been extremely important to our growth uh, at our OpenStack journey, and it had already granted more than 10 supports to members of our project. So most of the features we've been developing here is only with us due to uh, our attendance summit, which is only due to the travel support program. So that happens because uh, funding uh, travel to the summit is very expensive for us. For example, funding uh, uh, a member to go to this summit for, uh, is about as much as uh, funding an uh, undergrad student for a whole year. So this is not that easy for us and, at Brazil. And just just like to say that a few months you can apply, fill the form, and say why you think you need to go to the summit. And here a few tips on how to get yourself accepted to the summit. That's, uh, first of all, you need to be clear on what you really intend to do on the summit and things that you can do better in person that, than what you would do at the usual communication tools. For example, as I said, the social network in the face-to-face -face is very important and you can get things done much faster than discussing at mailing list and IRC. So you need to be very specific on that. And another thing that you need to be very specific is about your contributions. So uh, you can say phrases, good phrases like, I have implemented a blueprint in Nova that does something. I have implemented another critical patch in Glance that fixes a critical bug. So be very specific in how you contribute to OpenStack. Do not say loose phrases like, uh, for example, I would like to know Horizon. I would like to know Glance. And uh, do not say either for Barcelona Sun that I'd like to meet Lionel Messi or Neymar. So those are not good phrases that you can say. Be very specific on your contributions on OpenStack itself. And another uh, very important thing is that you can show how important you are locally in our community. I see here some members of the OpenStack Brazil community, which Hayud and I are part of. So for example, we have been part of, we have presented some OpenStack Brazil Hangouts, uh, where we talk about identity, about, mo about monitoring OpenStack. So if you have done something important on your local community, just say it. It's very important. The Travel Sports Program wants to know what you have been do doing in your country locally. And finally, be very uh, precise and show how valuable to the OpenStack community and focus on what you can achieve, uh, how this summit can improve your business and how you can improve the summit with your presence. Just say why the summit cannot happen if you do not go. Show how important you really are. And uh, this is a graph showing our attendance in summits. Uh, we have started from no members, nice house, then two in Juno, and in Kilo, whereas the first we used the travel support program, we have been growing almost expo exponentially. So uh, here in, in Austin, we have uh, 13 or 15 members of our team. 
So I'd like to thank the Travel Sport Program for the support it's been giving us since the Kilo. And just going on as Hyod started with the release cycle, there came the Liberty release, and with it, other problems that we tried to solve. And amongst the, the first one was that we tried to split our effort in a couple of other services that weren't our priority, and we had different lines on those services. So that was very difficult at the beginning. And again, Hyod said that we were responsible for implementing reseller and was targeted <laughs> to merge here after it was postponed in Kilo. So we thought that the patches were very big, were mature, were ready to merge, but however, they weren't as good as we thought. They were very big, very hard to reveal, so that was a problem we had in, here in Liberty. And as lessons learned in Liberty, we saw that splitting efforts when you have a not very ex experienced team may not be a very good way. So we had new members that weren't experienced and we started some good fronts, some new fronts, which made us not have a good results at the beginning. So try to have some kind of speciality at the beginning if you have, if you are increasing some the size of your team. And then about coming back about reseller, in every review, as I said, we haven't uh, been, we haven't made the best planning of all to the reseller. And in every single review, we have deeper and deeper discussions, which uh, was due to mainly because the patches were doing too much things. So the patches must not do a lot of things. You need to make those patches uh, precise, concise, and be very specific on some parts of the feature. And at Liberty Release, we have spent a lot of effort to refactor in those patches to make them smaller, easier to reveal. So that was a big overhead we had due to bad planning at the beginning. And that's when we have learned how to how we can quickly identify and report risks. And even more important, we needed to be more realistic in our expectations because we had uh, thought that one fe uh, this feature would be available in less than one release. We have gone to it second. But so that's not a very good planning, a very good expectation we had. And finally, we saw that uh, on the community, we needed to be more altruist. We were being kind of selfish on the community, so we were all the time, hey, please, my patch is good, review it. Hey, review it. So this is not something you should do. And you need to do your part too. So review code too. Do not only commit. And if you want ultimate stack to walk at the pace you desire, you need to review code to help the community to work, to walk, and not expect that only from the core members. And now uh, come the Mitaka release, which we have more problems to solve. And then, uh, starting with three members of our team have, has left, three experienced members, two other OpenStack players, such as HP and Red Hat. And at this point, we had also a partnership change, which made our, our contributions uh, have a little bit of re redirection. And we had a new focus on our project, which uh, was not that easy at the beginning. So this all looked good. However, uh, we had a bad side uh, main bad side on this change of focus. We still had two big blueprints pending. The first, the biggest of them was reseller. And with the change of focus, it wasn't our priority anymore. So what are we going to do to finish this, this work? And uh, even though we kept focused on Keystone at this new direction of us, we had also, we had again spread our work to other jobs, but this was a more specialized job. In the other services, we were still doing authentication stuff, which was our specialty. And uh, at this journey, we had to work with less major services that we didn't have any contact, some we didn't even know what they're for. And that wasn't that good at the beginning. However, uh, we have also, again, lessons learned in Mitaka. And we try to align our new priorities with the old ones. So that worked at the beginning. But we had, again, lots of work to do on reseller, again, due to our bad plan at the beginning. And uh, we had to do some part of this work at home. For example, as we are at the project in the university, we have some bureaucracy that has uh, some very fixed, limited budgets. So we do not have the concept of extra time here. And we needed to do part of this work at home by ourselves. So 
uh, we made it, we kind of made it. And this pending feature here, we could make part of it merge in Mitaka. So the work was split and we had about 80% merged. And I think 20% we're going to discuss here at this summit. So that's the biggest example we have of bad planning, of bad expectations. So we thought that we could make this feature in just one release. We have gone to a third and it wasn't even merged entirely. So again, be realistic, plan, design, discuss, be very thorough at the spec phase and you seem to have a lot of success more than we did at the beginning. And also, as I said, we started to make other changes in other services like Maker, which was not easy at the beginning, but it was extremely worthy uh, work since we had faster results on those last major projects than we had at the beginning. Because uh, those last major projects, those newer OpenStack projects tend to go at a faster pace. They want contributors, they want features, they have lots of bugs that you'll need to solve. So if you intend to start your OpenStack journey, the, maybe the last major projects may be a good start point as it worked for us even as we were being very major. And first, I'd like to finish here uh, just highlighting that our newcom members were able to contribute as a pro much and much faster than what we did at the beginning. We had experience, we had two years of OpenStack and we were able to pass our experience, our expertise to these members and they were immersed in the community in a much less painful way than Hayudo and other members of the project made at the beginning. So Hayudo now will finish this saying what we expect for this summit for Newton. So we are not here just to give this talk. We have a lot of things to do. Um, first of all, me and Henrique will be leading a design session tomorrow. We will be a cross-project workshop. Um, so Kiston uh, deprecated the V2 API and now they are moving to the Identity V3 API. So we want to discuss that. You, Kishon have a lot of features on V3, so this is amazing. And we will be discussing this tomorrow. Um, on Wednesday, me and Henrique will be on the Kishon new features when we will discuss these reseller things and another features that we have like Project 3 operations. And finally, we will be on Wednesday on the Kishon stabilization when we will be discuss about uh, Fernet tokens. It's a new feature on OpenStack and it's a, a great thing. So we just made here our result, our final results. So here we have an image with our members on the team. We started with seven people, which was um, two undergrad students, three engineers, and two PhD students. And if you saw on Kilo and Liberty release, our team increased a lot and on Liberty release was our biggest team. And some guys left our project and now we have 10 members uh, working with OpenStack. And if you look here, um, we have the average commit number. Um, the blue line is uh, the, uh, the co average commit numbers from our university, the red line is for the whole OpenStack and the green line is from the top 10 communities on OpenStack. So we can see that uh, on the killer release we was, as I said, we had the feeling that we are more experienced guys and we learned how to contribute with the community so we could be closer to the, the whole OpenStack average commits. And the other thing is after the, the guys left our project after Liberty, um, we still with the same uh, average commit numbers, so we could pass this experience for these new members and we stay with the same average commits. Um, and if you look on the review numbers, uh, we can see that on the killer release we was really closer to the whole open stack and on the Liberty release we passed this number. So we are learning how to contribute, how to review this code, not just in numbers but on the quality too. And, but we noticed that on the Mitaka release, we couldn't pass this experience for code review to these new members. So this is something that we are aware of and we need to work more with our team. <coughs> and finally, with the line of codes average, we can see that uh, on the killer release and Liberty, we was working as everyone on OpenStack. So 
we had the feeling that independent where you are, you can contribute uh, like everyone, like the core. So uh, OpenStack are prepared to be globally to everyone on the world work with OpenStack. So just a couple of general tips. Uh, we noticed that OpenStack have a great reception. We, we got this great reception from the community. But you need to be kind, polite, and receptive. This is re really important. Be uh, a good member from the community. It's really important to attend to the summit and mid cycles discussions. It's hard to get something done without being here. Everything is decided here. The design summit is really important for the dev team and for the operators too. You need to write complete and concise specs. Um, this is a, a real important phase of the, 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 the developed process, so you need to be aware of that. And keys, uh, keep it short and simple. Um, write clear commit messages, write uh, simple pairs, and you make your life easier and for the code reviews too. Uh, and provide use case. It's not just, hey, my company wants this inside OpenStack and I'm doing. No, you need to explain um, why this is important, why this needs to be uh, inside OpenStack. And as we've shown before, it is possible to have good results working outside the kernel. So what's the OpenStack community doing for uh, the, the outside kernel contributors? Right now, there is some and mid cycle transmissions. So this talk will be on YouTube later. You can see the outside the kernel guys can't see this later. And some services like Nova and Keystone make the mid cycle transmissions. So they create a Google Hangouts and you can be part of these mid cycles and so on. The travel support program, as Hick said, is really important to us. Um, the OpenStack metering, some guys from our team are participate of the OpenStack metering, so it's a, a important phase for new guys that are starting contributing now. Um, the OpenStack Day, some countries are organizing that. It's a kind of tiny summit when you can see uh, a couple of talks in your own language, language and, uh, and understand more about OpenStack, and improve the docs and tutorials. Uh, right now, the Brazil translation team, I'm a, a core member of the Brazilian translation team for Portuguese. So it's really important to have these docs on your own language. Uh, you will speed up the ramp up process for the, the, these new users, um, and you are contributing to your local community. So uh, finally, I want to thank you, the guys from the university that uh, we couldn't make this without him. Um, the Keystone team who we works and they help us a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of moments. And thank you, everyone. So if you have some questions, we are. Uh, okay. Can you, could you do the mic. microphone, please? <laughs> so it can be recorded. <laughs> Um, so we have a, the OpenStack infrastructure team has a developer manual that we publish that kind of works through um, like how to use Garrett and Git review mm -hmm. and those tools. I don't think we're translating it today. Is that something that we should try to be working on and publish? Yeah. Um, Do you think that would be useful? Yeah, usually the every service use the IATN library to the translators. Yeah. So Every message or every doc that you have that are using that, going to a tool, there is an ATA, and the translator guy use this tool to translate. You have a list of all these messages, and you can translate for your own language. So basically, if you are using that, um, the translator guy can have access for your docs. You don't need to be aware. You just say, hey, please translate that for every language that um, the OpenStack supports. Um, and then there was something else. I had another <laughs> one, but I don't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk later. Okay. Guess we no have problem. time. <laughs> so, so you can come back. <laughs> 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 um, 
Another thing that the the community has been looking at doing is like virtual sprints using IRC mm -hmm. and Asterisk or Google Hangouts and setting up a specific day or several days to mm -hmm. work on a specific feature or mm -hmm. you know bugs or do you think that's useful? Um, I know we tried it once and one of the things that became hard for us was the time zone difference. Like yeah. everyone in, in North America would be active for like this six hours and then mm -hmm. kind of doing the handoff and back, like that can be difficult. I don't know, have you tried any of those things or? Uh, I, I saw that you, I, I, there is the bug smash day, there is made on Mitaka. It was um, by country, some countries organized um, physical meetings, but I, we noticed that this works a lot. A lot of bugs was fixed, and they could explain for new members uh, about OpenStack. And I think that we can do some similar um, virtual meetings like that. It's like it's important um, be aware on which guys you are want to to be part of this meeting. If you are looking for new members, so you need to prepare uh, a little talk to explain about OpenStack and how to contribute. But um, as I say, we, we made our OpenStack Hangouts on Brazil. Now it's more focused on Brazil, but I believe that we can do the same thing uh, around the world. It's like you need just to be focused on who, who will be part of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the important thing. Okay. Maybe if we do as we did in Nova and alternate yeah. the schedule of that, that, that might also work on some yeah. I know, Asian countries. But that's, of course, it is very good for the outside contributors too. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. In fact, just a, a thing to make a note: the whole mid-cycle meeting of the Iron community was done in through audio conference with a tool that is maintained by the OpenStack community, and it was very important for our team in Brazil because we and naturally couldn't do it and go to, to summits, to the summit and to the mid-cycle. And we could uh, follow the discussions and participate. Uh, Simva was there with the guys, even in, in, the, in the late night meetings. And since it's a kind of scheduled meeting in a week, and we could mm -hmm. follow it even when they are very early in the morning. So yeah, so. Thanks.